Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Yellow Jackets Hive, presented by CordCutting.com. I'm Media Melanie, here with... And I'm Emily. And we have a special treat today. As many of you know, the cast of Yellow Jackets was on Celebrity Family Feud last night, uh, now streaming on Hulu today, if you didn't catch it on ABC last night. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. It was really fun seeing all of their personalities shine through. They were just so endearing all together. I loved it. What did you think, Emily? It was so awesome to see them in like some other capacity besides the show and to actually see what they're like in real life. It was a treat. I loved yes. every second of it. Warren Cole had me cracking up. I loved him. He might have been <laughs> one of my favorite parts along with Christina. She yeah. had some really funny answers. They were all just so so cute and lighthearted and endearing. It just worked so well with the format of teens versus adults. It was yeah. it was just so well done. Brilliant marketing as always, with the Yellow Jackets team. We also had a little watch party last night uh, for us West Coasters uh, because they aired it on the East Coast and the West Coast. We didn't get it at the same time, unfortunately. And we had a guest. We had a shift from Good Morning Mayberry podcast. Hey, shift. Hi. How are you today? Are you uh, recovering from the 320 uh, minutes it took you to fall asleep last night? <laughs> I was I was stressed out about that question. Uh, both those questions, actually, because I feel like Christina was kind of right. That's my life, but probably not a lot of the people that they're polling if they're answering some of the other answers they gave. Yes. And <laughs> speaking of the polling, that was something that we were talking about on the watch party last night, particularly with the pop star question. Yes. Um, we were wondering who exactly are they polling? Who are these people that are answering Elvis as the number one pop star aspiration? Um, and it turns out, I did a little research today, and according to the Wall Street Journal, the show uses a polling firm called Applied Research West, and they call random people who are not told their responses are for Family Feud, and that's how they gather their survey data. But how do, they, how do they define random? Do they yeah. do a subset from each region of the United States? Uh, we talked about, is this like a middle America polling? So I am still not sure exactly who they're asking, who these random people are. But what he just said in the comments, too, they didn't mention Prince, which is like another huge one, too. There were so many one. people that I expected to be on that list that were just not there. Like, how can you not have Britney Spears on uh, a question about pop stars when she was like the first real pop star that like my generation had? Mm -hmm. Right. Or not Justin Timberlake and Justin Bieber, too. I was surprised. Or not Lady Gaga, for instance. Yeah. I mean, Schiff, there were about, uh, what, 20 other pop stars we would have each thought besides Elvis. We were messaging I, that this morning. question particularly haunted me. I could not stop. There were a bunch of weird answers, like the the sex question, what would women rather do than have sex or whatever? Eat a, eat makes sense, but eat a raw onion is very specific. <laughs> yeah. And, like what almost was torture. What was up with that? What so was up weird. with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, the pop star question particularly, I was just like haunted by. And uh, Elvis threw me off because I started thinking about people like Tina Turner and I was like, yeah. well, I guess she's not like pop proper, but that's, that's a choice that we make to not have her be pro properly pop. I don't, yeah. I don't know what we're using to even define that. Uh, and then I started thinking too, like pop star doesn't necessarily just mean singer. I guess you sort of expect like a triple threat, but I don't think Elvis could really dance that well. He just did his hip thing. And then people started following that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't, I can't imagine what they're thinking. Yeah, crazy. And, you know, Rihanna wasn't on there. Um, J-Lo wasn't on there. Even, you know, when you Google the most popular pop stars, like Bruno Mars comes up. Mm -hmm. um, the Beatles, like I can see the yeah. Beatles even over Elvis, right? Yeah. So yeah. for sure. Well, and Elton John too. Like if yes. they're going into like Madonna and Elvis, I'm like, Elton John just did his last show in the UK like a second ago. So um, yeah, I wonder like how long ago they did the poll too like I wonder if they have any consistency to how they're doing any of that yeah was, was Taylor Swift on that list she was, was. She, yeah. Ashley was okay. Ashley Lyle I, I believe is the one who answered Taylor Swift as she should have been but I mean if we're going by current day Taylor Swift should have been number one let's face it yeah. I mean she's I don't know that Elvis belonged there at all that's not to I don't know I don't know that any yeah. of that list is anything but subjective but Elvis yeah. is 
odd direction to carry things. Yes. And as our friend, friend Vine said, I just thank Ashley for saying Taylor Swift. I think all of us Swifties do, of course, speak now. Her re-recorded match just came out this week. So it's been, um, you know, it's been a big week for Swifties. But yeah. And, you know, just to note also, each team played for GLAD last night, uh, which is, of course, a great cause. And uh, it's nice to see, of course, the adults ended up winning. And some of the sentiment is it was a very adult focused show. I mean, with the yeah. older skewing answers, with the adults playing more. Um, and it was cute, the matchups they had. Who was your favorite matchup at the podium, Emily? I think it would have to be Lauren Ambrose and Courtney Ian, just because when they approached each other, like she like gave her like a fist bump or something. And Courtney was like, what, bro? Like, <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> and she said, good luck. And then yeah. Lauren Ambrose was like, oh, you're going down. And Courtney's so cute, like wishing her luck. I thought that was adorable. Yeah. And she all their little like dancing. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Shift, what about you? What was your favorite matchup at the podium? That was really a great moment. I probably watched that clip like 40 times before that episode. I, I I set my phone down without realizing that it was just looping and heard it a bunch of times before. So that was cute. Um, but I also, when they had uh, Melanie and Sophie come up together, I think they were the first pair that kind of took my breath away. I didn't expect that. I was like, oh, cute. Um, so yeah, that was a good one. They kind of uh, matched too. They were both wearing pink. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Very cute. Yep, they sure yep. did. They sure did. That was a good matchup. I like that. And again, like for me, I just loved Warren Cole. Everything about him, his answer about cuddling. I loved his answers in the final one. He was He's good. So yeah. cute. Like I yeah. I love him. I mean, I love Jeff and it was so nice seeing Warren Cole really come to life on there too. He did a really good job in that bonus round. Mm -hmm. He did. He did. He we were watching. So serious. He did. Yeah. He was so serious. He was like military mode, like, yes, Sergeant. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I mean, keep keep your eye on the ball here, right? You know, I, I mean, he he nailed that. It was really funny. And then, of course, Christina ended up coming in and they got some duplicate answers. And the the one with the dishes, I thought was kind of funny too. Because I mean, hello, most obvious answer, and good she ended up getting that, but Again, like we put dishes in a dishwasher. It seems like yeah. too obvious a, of a question. I don't know. I don't know. That was kind of funny. But the 320 yeah. seconds falling asleep, that oh, will never not be a thing. <laughs> minutes. Yes. 320 minutes. How many minutes. hours would that be? That'd be like four, four hours or something like that. I mean, perpetual insomniac at 320 minutes for falling asleep. Uh, I think 30 minutes was the top answer, which is yeah. what these random people all replied and I think 30 minutes makes sense. Do you know how many people they pull? Did it say? You know what? It did not. I think they pull a hundred people. I think I've heard that mentioned before. It did not uh, mention that in the article I read, but I'm um, just going back to that raw onion thing. They had pulled a hundred women. Like what woman is answering they'd rather eat a raw onion than have sex? I know we just talked about it, but I, I really am having a hard time with that. What that's is, definitely I definitely would not prefer to eat a raw onion. <laughs> Yeah. Are we talking like eat it like a like a like an apple? apple or like <laughs> you know like are you slicing it and I putting imagine. it on a sandwich or a burger? That that could work, but uh yeah, raw onions very Is it is it like a like an old wives tale? Is there something I'm missing about it? Is that's what I'm wondering. They some of them seem to get it and some of them seem to kind of have that face, the, the head shake. And yeah, scream. I mean maybe it is a thing. Like maybe there's some reference in culture somewhere about sex and raw onions. If anybody in the comments knows, please feel free to enlighten us because yeah. we really have no idea. Okay, you know what? Michelle if, said if old the women, they'd rather do something gross than have sex. <laughs> really? Do old women not like having sex? I don't know. I mean my mom's favorite okay. answer was when Lauren Ambrose said breed. Like she would uh, rather read. <laughs> that wasn't even on the board. It makes sense though to be on the board. Yeah, Especially if we're talking, I feel like eat a raw onion and read would come out of the same demographic. Like, yes. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like also if we solve this raw onion question, we'll get a lot of answers about who they're polling specifically. <laughs> like, True. I also like the question about name something that you can tell somebody is rich just by looking at them. And I, yes. I thought the hair thing was really funny, of course, because Steve Harvey does not have any hair. So <laughs> that was um, amusing. I liked that. I part. was expecting House to be on that list. 
They talked oh, about yeah. the cars. They talked cars. about the clothes. Yeah. So I thought house would be next. So when they said perfect hair, I never associate a person's hairstyle with the amount of wealth that they have. So that was no. that was an interesting answer. <laughs> So just to recap, we had Tawny Cypress on the adult team. We had Lauren Ambrose on the adult team, along with Christina, Melanie, and of course, Warren Cole. Our teen yellow jackets, we had uh, Courtney, Sophie, Jasmine, Samantha, and Ashley Lyle. I love- They look like a girl band, like the teens. (laughs) Oh my God. They do look like a girl band. We should all come up with a name for it and make this into a meme or something because that's really, really cute. I love that Ashley Lyle was part of the team though. Me too. I I think that's fantastic. She is, of course, the show's co-creator and I love that she played with the teens. Fantastic move by the show. Yeah. I wonder how many viewers last night actually got because I think a lot of people who never watched Family Feud watched last night. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I can't remember the last time I've watched an episode of regular or celebrity Family Feud. So for me, it was definitely a thing. And uh, Shift and I had some technical issues with our watch party. We were both watching ABC Live, but we had a delay. So it was it was interesting. We tried to kind of sync it up and then we ended up showing it on my screen, uh, which I was nervous about because, you know, we try to respect copyright or whatever. But it, it worked out. But we did say next time we do a watch party, we're going to figure out a different protocol, maybe use one of these apps or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But it was fun. Yeah. It's always fun to get together with fellow jackets and yes. watch things live. And this was what we all needed. Of course, we only got nine episodes to the season. And we know there's a bonus episode, but this was everything we could all ask for between seasons. And hopefully there's going to be more fun types of things like this. Yeah, I hope so. Because at this rate, we're in for a long wait for season three with the, or yeah, season three with the way things are going with the strike and stuff. We sure are. The superheroes on Band-Aids, Superman, (laughs) Spider-Man, Christina. I said Batman. Batman. That was my Batman first makes show. sense. Yep, Batman would have been a good one too. I was trying to think of more current day superheroes, like more recent Marvel heroes or something. But I guess Spider Man makes sense. Yeah. Superman, I don't know. I'm, I guess it goes with the older crowd. I would think because yeah. Superman's not as in fashion as before. Not as much as Spider Man. I would say. I was really shocked though that the Hulk got zero responses. Like I would have thought I would have at least got one. Because I think he's a superhero. <laughs> I feel like the Hulk and Superman are kind of, uh, they're definitely like secondary as far as like kids apparel. Um, For sure. Yeah, Spider-Man's probably the, the go-to yes. uh, franchise right now. They've got yep. a, like Lego version. There's like a bunch of Spider-Man stuff going it's around. Every time I there's a new stuff, Spider-Man yeah. production. Yes. And then eyes on the ball eyes on the road and of road course, was my guess was it because i didn't yeah. think road i was thinking prize or eye on the game or whatever prize is good too. prizes oh prize is good eye on the prize and eyes on the road that's very practical i liked that answer from christina ricci she was so cute i mean the entire episode every little cute comment and expression she made i just i loved her i was so funny her. she was amazing she really was mm-hmm Yes. Yeah, seeing them interact under uh, casual pressure is a lot of fun. Uh, Definitely. I yeah. feel like the teens fell to the pressure a little bit. Sophie Nelise, I, I think, was a little nervous when Courtney was like, yeah. play, play. And, and uh, Sophie's like, okay, okay. So I thought I thought they were really cute. I, I loved she the was, dynamic of the teens. Sophie was getting really into it, too, when they asked that one question about um, seeing the uh, – the groom kissed somebody at the wedding on the wedding tape and they said dog you could see her she was swear they had to like leave out her mouth yeah. she was like I said that like, she was so mad she got so into it yeah <laughs> and that was a funny question too um I didn't see cousin coming as an answer I was no. like oh that's interesting or even mother for that matter like what yeah. room is French kissing like their mother or was it mother-in-law it was one of the two they but did both. They both. It's a twisted oh. question. It's it really, is. it's not even like the answer is so broad, and, but like the drama of that question really like hit me and scrambled my brain chemistry. So even if I had a good answer <laughs> real quick, I might get tongue tied delivering it. Uh, such a mean question. I was watching the previews for this season 
And one of the questions that they put in the preview is the funeral home loses your body. What do they put in the casket instead? What? And I was like, what? what did they? And someone said horse. And then they cut to other stuff. And I was like, that is like almost violence. I don't even know how to. <laughs> what are you talking about? What a question. <laughs> Who comes up with that? Like, whose job is it to yeah. write the polling questions that they're sending out to these people that are saying elf is? Oh, my God. Crazy. Oh, my God. Hey, I need to highlight something in the comments here by Dustin Smothers. Raw oh. onions are seen as aphrodisiacs. I did not okay. know. I've heard chocolate. I've heard oysters. I've heard pineapple. Oh, pineapple. Didn't know that. Can you imagine just eating a raw onion and then doing it? Like, onion is... No. Onion is a strong choice. Yeah, no, like, that seems like the opposite your of Your breath is going to stink <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Who's going to want to have sex with you after you eat a raw onion? <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> nobody. And, you know, some insight from Vine, too. I was thinking Christina said hair since her husband is a oh, hairstylist. Yes. That makes right? Sense. That does make a lot of sense now that we think of it that way. And they're such a cute couple, by the way. I love their photos on Instagram. And um, our friend Michelle was – on our watch party last night. That was fun. She thought it was great. Thanks for doing it. I uh, just rewatched on Hulu. I also rewatched on Hulu today just to refresh my memory. And I'm wondering, again, how many people watched last night? How many people watched again on Hulu today? Did you watch both times? Alyssa was in the watch party and she'd already watched it twice by the time mm -hmm. she came to the watch party. So she's like <laughs> a three time watcher, which is really funny. So it's funny. Something else I thought was interesting. I was surprised that they had Sammy Hanratty do the introduction for the teen team because, of course, Steve Harvey went through, introduced each one of the adults, mentioned different shows that they're on, etc. I was surprised they mentioned Two and a Half Men for Melanie Linsky. I mean, it's an older <laughs> show, but of course, she's known for that. And Six Feet Under for Lauren Ambrose, also an older show, but a great show. Shift, have you watched Six Feet Under? I sure have. Yeah, oh, yes. I mean, it's it's a good one. It's a good one. But it, I thought it was odd that Sammy introduced the teen team. They didn't get props for their other work that they've done, you I know? know? I was thinking the same thing. Why highlight the adults and not say what the teens have done? Yeah. I it definitely was, was a concerted choice, too, because they moved through it like it was choreographed. Yeah. Uh, that whole part was real smooth until they started the game and everybody started panicking. Um, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm curious why they why they did that. Also, it was it was a loud choice. Well, you know, Joseph saying maybe they gave it to Sammy to save time. It was a tight 30 minutes, I guess, for their slot. But I don't know. I just I still wish that the teens had got some recognition for their work because they all. It's a little dishonorable. It. Sammy Hanratty was time. the yes, and she yeah. was the only one. They you know he mentioned Shameless and um, another show she had been on, but. Uh, none of the other ones got there. Yeah. Too, so really I thought weird. that yeah. was like just maybe. A Jasmine's been in a ton of stuff lately. She's in she like a million. Scream. I don't even know how she has the time to be in all the things that I'm seeing her in. Yeah. Yeah. She was great in the new Scream. I loved that. Yeah. Oh, I haven't watched it yet. And oh, you know what? Another point by Michelle, um, probably an older audience. So they're feeling into what they would know and recognize. And that's a really good point, too. If the demographic of viewers is skewing much yeah. older, then I guess it would make sense. Oh, whatever about these young whippersnappers and they you don't know, know focus us. on the adults. <laughs> they don't know us. This <laughs> fan base is crazy. We will make noise about things and talk about it. Yes. Yes, yeah. we will. Um <laughs> But I think the big takeaways for me are the 320 minutes. Like, that was hilarious. I, and I, I can't get over the pop stars. Like, those were my two, I would say, biggest moments, takeaways from the show. Yeah. Emily, what about you? Your two biggest favorite things, moments, takeaways? Um, I really loved how Warren just answered all the questions in the bonus round. That was probably one of my favorite parts because he was so nervous and he was so serious. But he gave great answers. And he gave a lot of answers that were the top answer so yeah he was really good he, he left christina ritchie with 50 points to get something like that yeah he had 130 you know she didn't have a lot to make up so that was good yeah and i loved when like i already said when lauren and courtney greeted each other at the podium that was probably my favorite moment i love that too um shift how about you your favorite two moments oh gosh uh I really like, I liked Christina Ricci kind of throughout. Uh, she often reminds me of myself, like when she, she'll get like a, a question in an interview and then like have this kind of moment of pause and then whatever it is that comes out of her mouth is like 
well, that makes sense to me, but I feel like most people are not going to get that. What an odd person. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, her her 320 minutes thing is that's going to be like a one liner for me forever, probably. Hilarious. Um, Hilarious. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I kind of I I really I liked the questions that threw them off a lot. Like anytime they got kind of awkward, Courtney being like, "Oh no, my face is turning red." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I both of them clearly did not know what to do or say with each other, and Lauren Ambrose coming up with her like challenger dance or whatever that was. <laughs> like they're trying to like meet each other at whatever level, and I'm I'm sure they got to like hang out a little bit before to yeah like kind of calibrate the vibe or whatever yeah so, yeah. Uh, yeah that was cool yeah what about I liked you it. Melanie gosh I mean definitely the 320 minutes that was that was a top one and I just liked how they had the matchups of, of Shauna and Shauna I liked how they had Ty and Ty they had Misty and Misty so I liked the way they did the matchups and I, I liked the way they configured the teams I just think it was really smart all together. And Warren Cole. I mean, I also loved Warren Cole. I thought that was phenomenal. Yes. And I mean, there's so much pressure going on a game show. I'm actually going to be going on Let's Make a Deal uh, on Paramount Plus at some point sometime this summer, which I'm really nervous about. You have to do split second thinking and you can see some of the Yellow Jackets getting nervous about giving their answers. And like you said, Christina pausing and this cute, quirky awkwardness. So um, I'm I'm nervous to go on a game show. It's a lot of pressure. So I think they all did great, though. It was uh, kind of a blowout by the adults, but it was fun watching them compete. Yeah. And I wonder sure. if it was fixed, you know, for the older team to win. I mean, yeah. just saying, like we've talked about the audience demographic. I mean, do you think it could have been fixed? Probably not. But it's funny that the older team did win. Yeah, it is. I feel like Christina Ricci's performance, her behavior is like indicative that it was not staged. Um, like I think they, yeah, uh, the awkwardness and there, there was a little bit of randomness to it. The last answer being dishes also is kind of like <laughs> so obvious it's silly, but yeah, like so obvious you could just skip right over it, trying to overthink it. Um, but yeah, I think they, I think they probably, it, it really ultimately doesn't really matter who wins in a game like that. It really is kind of about watching them interact and ultimately Glenn ends up true. getting what they need. Exactly. I think actually, if they don't answer the last questions properly, if they don't get that final round, does Glad lose out on that money or what? I've got to think work? Glad's then, winning no matter what. I've probably. just got to think when you're playing for a charity like that, no matter what, you know, they're going to be getting something and, and great cause. So of yeah. course, it's nice that they were able to pick that charity, play for that cause. And Joseph's wondering, do we know if there's a reason why only certain cast members were there? I've got the to think it's a schedule. Yeah. Size. yeah, that's and, my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I feel would, like if Liv Houston was available, they would have had them because they had Lauren. And yes. it would have made sense to watch them go against each other since we saw Shauna versus Shauna, Misty versus Misty, Ty versus Ty. So and, yeah, I definitely think it was just scheduling. Yes. And Simone Kessel would have been another one, of course, if they were yes, going for the right. matchup vibe with Lottie mm -hmm. versus Lottie. But I've got to say, I'm just so glad that Warren Cole was there. I think he was just such a great addition. And I, I just can't get over how cute he was. Him and Christina both. They really stole the show for me. Absolutely. I yes. agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, and then Michelle also uh, commented about, I'd also venture to guess they didn't have anyone on who died since they taped it before the season ended, so they wouldn't be emotional now with past teammates. Okay. Mm. Could possibly see that as a thing. Could possibly see that. But yeah. overall, huge win by the Yellow Jackets PR and marketing team for making this happen. Really smart formatting, putting teens against adults cute, quirky, a little awkward, and just great seeing all their personalities shine through in a real life situation and not this very serious, dark show. Yeah. It was so lighthearted. And it, again, it was everything I think the Yellow Jackets fandom needed to help continue getting us by before season three. Yeah. Now we just have to wait for this bonus episode. Yes, indeed we do. Indeed we do. And it sounds like, as Ashley Lyle had mentioned, um, it will probably be closer to season three. It seems like with the strike, there's probably some more yeah. writing or something they need to do with it. So it's not just done and sitting there and they're waiting. So yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later. But um, yeah, I'm just so glad we got some new content. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're and patient, but we're passionate. I can't wait for them to come back, but I definitely a good support way to the writer's strike. It. 
Definitely. Yeah. Um, and hey, Shift, thank you again for suggesting doing the West Coast Watch Party. That was a, a great suggestion. And, you know, in the future, we'll figure out uh, ways to do more of these watch party type things. And uh, we'd love to collaborate with you again. So we'll definitely keep in touch. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun, even through the technical issues. Hopefully the technocratic overlords are paying attention <laughs> to things like this because we just want to gather on the internet, you know, like yeah. we were trying so hard to encourage people to get on ABC Live and we were just having some latency issues, which uh, wouldn't have been the case if we were all on cable back in the day. The old tech worked well yeah. to be right on time, even across the country. Yeah. Um, yeah. We would have been all synced up, but you know what? We made it work. Overcoming obstacles yeah. is part of life. So we, yeah. we nailed that. And uh, thanks to everyone who joined in on the watch party. And uh, everybody, go check out Shift's podcast, Good Morning Mayberry. What's the website, Shift? GoodMorningMayberry.com. And you can find me everywhere podcasts are. I'm on YouTube also and all the places. Awesome. Thank you. All the places. Love that. Well, we'll talk to you soon. And uh, have a great day and week. You too. All right. Thanks for bye. having me. Bye. Of course. Bye. All right. So... I thought we would also kind of plug some things we have coming up, Emily, including our Emmys Buzz reaction, which yes. will come out on Wednesday. Of course, yes. Emmy nominations are Wednesday. What time did you say? I they think? start at 8.30 Pacific time. 8.30 Pacific time. Okay, nice and early. Yep. I'm going to have to get up, get ready for it. We're actually going to be on cordcutting.com. Yes. And for anybody who is not yet checked out our Hive Hub page, please do so. You can go to cordcutting.com slash yellowjackets dash hive. Essentially, it's set up like a blog. So we have our most recent video at the top, and then you can scroll down, click on all of our posts. You can get all of our content there. And be sure to also follow them on uh, YouTube at Cord yes. Cutting. Yes. Yes. And we appreciate them so much. And uh, we have some other stuff coming up this month. We have a fun interview that we're going to be doing for Cord Cutting. We won't say who it is yet, but we will say it was somebody that we've uh, spoken with before, not on our podcast, but in a different capacity. Uh, somebody that was only on season one, somebody that was only on season one, the final episode of season one. So see if you can put the pieces together. Somebody in the 96 timeline as they appeared on the show in season one. So we can't wait to talk with him. It is a him. Um, so yeah, if you're a citizen detective out there, you probably know who we're talking about, but if not, it'll be a fun surprise and we're going to start promoting that soon. So yes, that will be wait. a lot of fun. Yes. And we have our Yellow Jackets Hive merch shop opening up later this week. We're going to launch it yes. on Thursday, have to make some final tweaks. We've been working with a couple of designers. We have some really fun new Yellow Jackets yeah. designs in there. So we cannot wait to share that. We, of course, dropped a link to it in our page. Patreon. So our patrons have a chance for a couple of days here to get some lower prices uh, on this new merch. And yeah. again, we just can't wait to share it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, we have a couple of really awesome designs that I just can't wait for everybody to see. Yes. One of them I would literally get tattooed on myself. Yes. I love it so much. I am obsessed with it. Uh, our friend Erin designed that one in particular, and it is just so cute, and we yeah. can't wait to share it with everybody. So Yes. Yes. So, yeah, go catch up on our content. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us and Cord Cutting on YouTube. Check out our Hive Hub page. And as usual, we just want to thank all you guys for tuning in. It's been a little bit since we've done a live stream. Um, we're trying to stay very consistent with creating new content, so – we always appreciate you buzzing in and consuming it. So thank yes. you. Yeah, so it was so fun to do another live stream. I love live streaming. Live streams are absolutely the best. And we're going to aim to do another one this month too. So yeah. uh, we'll promote that and let everybody know when it is so you can buzz in. And of course, our patrons always get to sit backstage and watch if they would like to hang out with us. Another little perk. We sure so. do. Yes. And speaking of our Patreon, if you do want to join, that is at patreon.com slash Um, We added another tier. We added a $3 tier. So uh, check it out. We've got two tiers in there, you know, about a, the price of a cup of coffee. So uh, yep. we appreciate all of your support. Some of you guys have been with us from the beginning and yeah. we love you all. So buzz, yes. buzz, buzz.
Yes, buzz, buzz, buzz. All right. Well, uh, we will talk to you guys soon. If you um, enjoyed Family Feud, please drop a comment. Let us know who your favorite matchup was, what your favorite moment was. We want to hear all about your reactions to this Yellow Jackets Family Feud as well. So be sure to drop a comment and let us know. Yes. So until we spill again.